the Monday morning, May 17, 2021. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Monday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Monday morning, so let's begin. First step, sports leagues to review COVID-19 protocols following new CDC guidance on masks. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. A lot goes into taking care of your property. You need equipment with more reliability, durability, and... The New Hampshire Soccer Association is one of many youth sports programs that still have COVID-19 protocols in place. And despite the CDC relaxing its stance on masks for fully vaccinated people, Association President Rusty Whiteman says those policies will remain in place. Even though we see things going in a very, very positive direction with our vaccines... Um, we are going to hold steady right now. Currently, coaches are required to wear masks at all times. Players do not have to wear them while actively on the field, but they must be screened before they can take their masks off. So temperature checks and, of course, the appropriate questions. Um, how are you feeling? Have you been around anyone? Uh, direct contact with COVID and such. Whiteman says the association will review its COVID-19 protocols when the spring season ends next month and changes could be made for next season. We know the governor just, uh, you know, just released, uh, you know, that particular age group in. Uh, we're going to let our youth get in, get vaccinated before we start lifting our protocols and, and uh, policies. Now, the association also has an adult program. Those protocols and policies will remain for that league as well. Reporting in Manchester, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Today is the deadline to file your 2020 taxes. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. A lot goes into taking care of your property. You need equipment with more reliability, durability, and versatility built in. Like number one selling Kubota compact tractors that can do it all right. Z-series mowers that deliver a quality cut. And a sidekick utility vehicle built for hard work and fun at 40 miles per hour. Kubota equipment lives up to the highest standards. Yours. Visit your local dealer today. Chapel Tractor, where you'll notice the difference since 1955. Today is the deadline to file your 2020 tax returns, and for a second year in a row, the deadline was extended to give people more time to file during the pandemic. Ray Brewer joins us now with what you need to know if you have not submitted your paperwork yet. And if you owe money to the IRS, local experts say there are some steps you can take to limit the damage. I've never been more frustrated for the taxpayer. Rusty Mosca, a CPA with Nathan Weschler and Company, says if you have not yet filed your 2020 tax returns, don't panic. He says if you owe money, you can ask for an extension or at least file some paperwork by the end of Monday's deadline with some sort of payment included. Take your best guess at what you think your tax liability is counting all the payments you've had. Another option if you owe money, you could work out a payment plan. There's some interest charges to that. And, and so, you, you, you know, it, it does cost more money for sure to do that. But in circumstances and, and, and you know, whatever it may be, uh, it's better than not trying to make that attempt. One thing Mosca says you will want to try to avoid is having to contact the IRS directly. He says right now, the agency is dealing with a shortage of workers. They just don't have the employees there. And also you have to realize they've been pumping out these stimulus checks and doing 
other work. And as we know, it's been COVID and working it remotely that the IRS is doing. It's just a bunch of other challenges. If you do not file in time, there could be repercussions. There's a, um, a late filing, a failure to file penalty. There's interest on top of it. Now that uh, failed to uh, um, file penalty is uh, 5% on the amount of tax owed for each month that the return is late. If you file but don't pay, the penalty is just 0.5% for each month. Reporting live, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Cause of Windham Fire under investigation. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Their reviews. <laughs> Our reviews. I'm so happy. <laughs> Find out what we're all about at AdamVRoofing.com. This morning, the cause of a fire in Windham is under investigation. Officials say it happened last night around 10 o'clock on Golden Brook Road. Upon arrival, crews reported a gazebo or a shed behind the home was fully engulfed in flames. Firefighters were able to get everything under control in about a half hour. The fire did not extend into the home. However, there was some heat damage to the exterior. All residents were able to escape safely. No one was injured. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Pokemon craze leads to stores pulling cards from shelves or running out of stock. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. The past year has tested the toughness of every last one of us. Mahindra tractors have been there for our tough customers as they continue working. They say everything old becomes new again. When we were all kids, we all loved Pokemon. That childhood hobby of collecting the shiny cards with characters on them, making its comeback as people hunkered in their homes during the pandemic. A lot of people were at home with nothing really to do. And then when the stimulus happened, people had all this extra disposable income that they may or may not put towards bills, but we, I found a lot of people putting it into buying Pokemon. Jamie Gerard owns Awesome CCG in Londonderry. I saw my sales of my online store jump uh, basically last May is when it started. While retailers like Target are pulling the cards from brick and mortar stores and others are selling out as people buy them in mass and resell them on the secondary market, Jamie says his local shop has them in stock. I've been trying to keep it in stock as much as possible, like setting limits and stuff like that. Those interested range in age from kids new to the world of Pokemon to those that have loved them for years and may be interested to see how much they could fetch for their collection. It's worth digging out, if, if only for the nostalgia of going back through and seeing them. Um, and definitely with those early sets, they, it's quite possible. They say stores pulling some of the items from their shelves could mean some good news for collectors. The one good thing that may start happening with this is that if people are coming to local stores, you may find the market prices start lowering down a little bit. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Manchester conquered areas among hottest retail estate markets in the U.S., according to a report. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. A lot goes into taking care of your property. You need equipment with more reliability, durability, and versatility built in. Like number one selling Kubota compact tractors that can do it all right. Z-series mowers that deliver a quality cut. And the Sidekick utility vehicle built for hard work and fun at 40 miles per hour. Kubota equipment lives up to the highest standards. Yours. Visit your local dealer today. Chapel Tractor, where you'll notice the difference since 1955.
As the pandemic loosens its grip in the U.S. and New Hampshire, the housing market continues to be strong for sellers. The New Hampshire housing market is doing extremely well. If we had more houses to sell, it would do even better. Realtor.com's latest data shows the hottest markets in the country are the Manchester, Nashua, and Concord areas. The average home in the Manchester, Nashua area is $400,000, and Concord is at $379,000. New Hampshire realtors say statewide the average home is on the market for just 32 days. And Realtor.com says in April, half of Manchester area homes sold in under 10 days, 33 days faster than last year. The president of New Hampshire's Association of Realtors says the market is strong across the state. It's good for sellers, but can be tough for buyers. We have a, a number of buyers working right now, and typically we find that it's been taking as many as three to sometimes five offers on the property before you get that magic combination together and they're successful being able to buy one. Jim Lee says more people are looking because of a combination of lower interest rates and people wanting more space in the pandemic. Realtor.com says across the country, new listings in April were down 25% compared to previous years. New Hampshire realtors say sellers were reluctant to put their house on the market because of the pandemic, and then they too would need to find a new place to live. Jim Lee's advice to buyers right now? You just need to be very, very patient and don't get your heart set on the one house that you think you have to have. Jim says he does expect to see an increase in inventory in the second half of this year, and he says if you are buying, don't waive the home inspection unless you have cash to fix big, unexpected issues down the road. In Manchester, Jessica Miranda, BMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that rapport. One additional COVID-19 related death in New Hampshire. Activity cases decline. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Tractor has been in our family since 1955 when great-grandfather Pearlie and our grandfather George decided to sell tractors out of their barn. The state reporting 1,274 current cases. That's a decrease of 64 in the last 24 hours. There are 139 new positive cases tonight. The total number of cases in the state since the start of the pandemic is now approaching 98,000. Hospitalizations are trending downward. 50 patients are being treated right now. That's the lowest since early November. And today is the first day since April 4th with no new hospitalizations. One new death brings the state's total now to more than 1,300. And the total number of recoveries in New Hampshire surpassing 95,000. Tonight, nearly 43% of people here in New Hampshire are fully vaccinated. That's more than 579,000 people. And even more people have their first dose of vaccine, 56%. Nationally, 37% of the country is fully vaccinated. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Twenty four seven subway service to resume as outdoor dining curfew ends today. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC Seven and Why. We turn uh, to the pandemic, the major steps forward happening this week. Tomorrow, subways resume full service. They will run 24 hours once again, plus restaurants get to drop their curfews for outdoor diners. Eyewitness News reporter Diana Rocco is live for us in Hell's Kitchen with the latest. Good morning to you, Diana. Michelle, good morning. This is certainly welcome news and a long time coming after restaurants have been dealing with so much over the last 14 months of this pandemic. They went from no seating to limited seating and then these curfews. Well, that all goes away tomorrow. 
uh, it starts to go to wait tomorrow at least because those curfews will drop for outdoor dining. Indoor dining still a few weeks away, but outdoor dining that starts tomorrow as restaurants gear up for 100% capacity starting Wednesday. Then in two weeks, the midnight curfews will go away for indoor dining. And the 1 a.m. curfew for catering events also ends. This has been a difficult 14 months for restaurants in the city. The Restaurant Association predicting that nearly half of the city's eateries might not survive this pandemic. This also comes as the MTA is gearing up to restart overnight service. They saw a 90% decrease in ridership during the pandemic months and they had been stopping trains overnight for a deep cleaning. Well, beginning at midnight tonight, overnight service resumes. More than 2 million people rode the subway in a single day last month, but that is still shy of the 5 million the system was carrying every day before the pandemic started. The interim president of the Transit Authority is looking forward to the return of 24-7 service. That's great news. We're thrilled to have people come back 24-7. We're a 24-7 city. We want to be a 24-7 system. We always have been, except for the last year. So it's wonderful to be able to bring back ridership to 24 hours a day. So we're delighted by that. And I think it shows that the city's coming back, that people are coming back. So that's great news. And of course, masks will still be required underground, but you can see that entire interview with Sarah Feinberg coming up a little later this morning on Up Close with Bill Ritter. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.